I completed the other week, sir. The previous week's uh, lectures I haven't seen. Ah, uh, okay, okay, fine. Okay. Then, like, just complete it when you get time, okay? And others, please try this question. In this question, first of all, I will tell you, from the half-life that is given here, you will calculate the rate constant K, and then from the integrated rate equation, what you're going to do, you're going to calculate the initial reactant. Okay, what percentage of the initial reactant will react, okay? That means how much has reacted. So you will get something like A naught upon A. So what you have to do, you have to do, you have to calculate, see what is the A and what is, what is A naught and what is A, and then calculate the difference between A naught and A in terms of percentage. First of all, calculate the K and then send the answer to me on WhatsApp, okay? First do that and then we will think about the integrated rate law equation. Please do this and then send the answer on WhatsApp, okay? How many are here? Krenza, Krishna, Kulsam, Dubna, Shahin. Okay. Shahin, did you send me some doubt today? Was that you? Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, can you send me the question also? Okay. Okay. First do this and then we will discuss that question also. Okay. Try to uh, calculate the K in under two or three minutes. Hello, Mansi. How are you? I'm fine, sir. Fine. Okay. Please try this question. Okay. And then we'll move on to the next topic. Good evening, sir. Good evening, Akshay. Uh, yes, that is correct, Akshay. But uh, I mean, you have to worry about this 20 hours on the later part of the question, right? Right now, you need to calculate the rate constant. And once you calculate the rate constant in the integrated rate law equation, wherever you are going to write the time term, in that you will convert this hours to seconds and then you will write that time term. Okay, first of all, calculate this rate constant and then send it to me on WhatsApp or in chat as per your wish. Guys, guys, just wait a second. Sorry. Last class, did we do that first order? Half life of first order, or we just did the half life of zero order? Or did we do any half life? Yeah, sir. We did first order as well. We did first order as well? Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, fine then. Fine. Achha, achha, chali, hai. Okay. Okay.
Matthew, the answer for K is correct. You can write the integrated rate law equation for the first order. Plug in the value of K, plug in the value of time in terms of second, and then calculate what is the value of, you calculate till here, log A naught upon A. Okay, you just calculate okay, till here, sir. and then I will tell you how to calculate this log part. Okay, because up till right, that sir. point, chemistry is done. Whatever is after that, that is mathematics. Okay. So just calculate log right, a not uh, upon a is equal to how much this is for everyone also those who have calculated the value of k okay Yes, Akshay, that is correct. Uh, Kinza, up uh, the way you have uh, calculated the 10 to the powers, no? the powers of 10, there is something problematic there. No? Please have a look. Like when you have 10 to the power 4 in the denominator and when it goes up, I think the sign will change, right? Yes or no? Yes, Kinza? Yes, sir. Yeah. So please look into that and then correct your answer, okay? Yeah, sure. Okay. Guys, please uh, send whatever you have done, okay, in two minutes. And then I will discuss this. Akshay, can you send the answer on WhatsApp? I just want to see how you have done that.
uh, how are you calculating in terms of ln akshay Let's take it in now. Sorry, no, no, no. I'm just asking you, like, how are you calculating, like, uh, in terms of ln? And I, I ln a naught upon a is equal to okay, okay, fine. You have done that. Okay, okay, just a second. Sorry, ln a naught upon a is equal to um, to that much. Yeah, you have to convert it to, to log because uh, you remember, right? If there will be 2.303 term, that will also be multiplied in the RHS, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then only we can calculate. So, I mean, this is not the end, okay, Akshay? Like this is, uh, this log A0 upon A, it is not the end. It's so, we'll have mm -hmm. to work for that also, okay? Do in terms of log. Krishna. <clears throat> uh okay mm. uh 10 to the power minus 4 i don't think so krishna i mean it should be a bit less than that 20 into 60 into 60 that is fine 0. Point, yeah that is also fine just a second okay uh, guys uh please see here So we have two formulas. Tell me, k is equal to in terms of half life. K is equal to how much? K is equal to zero point six nine three divided by t half. Right. This is one equation, and then also we know that k is equal to I'm sorry. My cousins are here and they are very curious that how I teach. Okay. So K is equal to uh, what will be in terms of integrated rate law equation 2.303 divided by the time taken log of A naught upon A. Okay. And now from here what we can say. See I will plug in this value here. So I will say that 0.693 divided by t half t half is how much t half is equal to 5 into 10 to the power 4 seconds and i am just ignoring the seconds for now this will be equal to 2.303 divided by 20 into 60 that will be uh, 20 into 60 will be equal to how much uh, 6 is a 12 and, and then again so 7200 0, 0, 20 into 60 into 60 6 is a 36 and one more 0 is that right yes or no please tell me guys in terms of seconds yes, yes sir yeah okay and then we are having log of a naught upon a okay now so log of a naught upon a this will be equal to how much this will be equal to 72 or rather 7.2 into 10 to the power 4 into 0 0.693 divided by 5 into 10 to the power 4 into 2.303 so i think this will be getting cancelled so 10 to the power 4 10 to the power 4 will get cancelled and what is this value I think this value will come somewhere around 0 0.04. Okay. 2.303 and 0. 0.43 or 0 0.0. 0. Okay, just a second. Let me see. Mm, 7.2 into 0 0.693. This is equal to. 
डिवाइड बाई फाइव इंटू टू पॉइंट थ्री जीरो थ्री फाइव इंटू टू पॉइंट थ्री जीरो थ्री या या एलेवन पॉइंट फाइव सो दिस विल इक्वल बी जीरो पॉइंट जीरो पॉइंट फोर थ्री राइट करेक्ट यस ओके फाइन सो दिस इज जीरो पॉइंट फोर थ्री लॉग इन ऑट अपॉन यू A not upon A is equal to zero point four three. Now, what do we need to calculate? We need to calculate ten to the power zero point four three will be equal to how much, right? If I want to calculate A not upon A, I am going to write this as ten to the power zero point four three. Correct, guys? Yes or no? Please tell me. Yes. Yeah. So now tell me what log will be there. is there anything that is near what is log 3 0.48 that is equal to 0.48 this is equal to 0.43 and uh, what else is there okay one more thing i can do what is 1 minus 0.43 only Zero point. Equal to how? Zero point five seven. Five seven. Yeah, correct. Zero point five seven. So is five zero point five seven any good? Near to something? Uh, four log four. Log four is equal to zero point six, right? Yes, sir. Um, okay. So here we have four, and both are having a difference of okay, fine. So I think it will be between four and uh, three. Correct, guys? Yes or no? Yes, sir. Yes. It will be between four and three. So no, no, no. Sorry. Ten to the power one. So this will be equal to ten to the power one minus zero point four three. Just a second. You can think. I mean, we cannot be exact. Actually, I think, right? We cannot be exact. Okay. Uh, ten to the power zero point four three. How to calculate that? Five seven four or four or three के बीच में नहीं होगा because I have taken one minus four three ना not be between that two it's like near to three but I think it will be less than three because zero point four three and ten to the power zero point four eight is equal to three so it will be two point something. Right, guys. It will be two point six or two point seven. It's such a thing because it is very near. So two point six nine. Two point six nine is coming. Mm, okay, but actually, I was thinking like how to calculate this because we have not been given the log table, right? We have not been given the log table. Have we done the calculation correctly till here? Is there any mistake here? All of you are getting the same answer. Yes or no? Tell me. Is everyone getting the same answer till here? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. No good or what? If I am going to take, maybe if I take this ten to the power zero point four three is equal to three, 
and then I am going to so take in out upon it. Right? Have we taken the time right? Time is right only, na? Time is correct only, na? Twenty hours. We'll have sixty minutes. Sixty minute will have sixty seconds, right? Oh, okay, fine, yeah. Okay. Now I'm thinking like uh, just a second. Okay. Maybe do one thing. I think this question is not right. It will not be twenty hours. I think it will rather be two hours. Because when I will have two hours, then. Wait a second. Then this one zero will not be there, okay? And then this zero was in the numerator here, so here I will be getting zero point zero four three. Yeah, I think that is that is the mistake here. That it will not be twenty hours. Then only we will be able to calculate because this number zero point zero four three. It is if you subtract here one minus zero point zero four three, the answer that you will be getting is equal to how much? One minus zero point zero four three. Zero point nine five seven. Nine five seven. Okay, now just imagine if it was like this. This was zero point zero four three. Now it is. I mean, now you can actually calculate also. Otherwise, it will not be. I mean, without calculator, you will not be able to calculate if it was twenty hours. Four three zero point zero four three. Okay. Now zero point zero four three. I can write it as. Ten to the power one minus zero point nine five seven. Other I can just write zero point nine six. Okay, and then this will be equal to ten to the. This is uh, positive, so that will be ten to the power one. Now this is negative, so it will be ten to the power zero point nine six. I can write in the denominator. And as you can see, ten to the power zero point nine six will be equal to what? Ten to the power one, and this will be ten to the power zero point nine six will be equal to nine because log nine is equal to zero point nine six, right? Yes or no? Correct, Chris. Yes, yes. Hana, log nine is zero point nine six, right? Hana. Okay, then only it is calculatable. Now you can even see that it is very easy. A naught upon a. So if a naught is ten, a is equal to nine, right? That means. When a naught is ten, a is equal to how much? Eight is equal to nine, and then I can say that ninety percent of a is remaining. Correct, guys? Yes or no? Please tell me. Ninety percent is remaining. So how much is left? Ten percent is react. Sorry, a itna to remaining itna is left. Ten percent is reacted. Can all of you see that? Yes or no? Please tell me. Mm -hmm. yes. Tell me, guys. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. I think I will just recheck this from some other textbook. I think it will be two hours only. Okay, please copy this down. Let me just recheck this somewhere else. This was in two thousand Two thousand and nine, two thousand and nine.
All of it done. Yes or no? Please tell me. Yes. Okay. Just let me see what we did in the last class. Uh, okay. We did this also. We did the graph also. Okay. And uh, Shaheen, the question that you sent now. Yes, Shaheen, are you there? Hello, Shaheen, am I audible? Are you there? Shaheen is not here. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, you are here now. Okay. Yes, can you can you see the answer here? आपने जो सवाल भेजा था ना? Can you see the answer for that here? देखिए जरा. Can you see it? Yes, sir. Now you can see. It's what? It's yes, just sir. twice, right? है ना? so your question that was in this question was in the assignment okay all of you if half life period of first order reaction is x okay they are uh, they are asking and this is t half t1 by 2 is equal to x and they are saying that t3 by 4 is equal to y what is the relationship between x and y so y is equal to twice of x okay that's it all of you got it guys theek okay. hai so this was directly from the notes and there is one question that is very important so we will do that equation sorry that question first and then we are going to move on okay just a second please write this question did we do this question in the last class yes or no tell me yes sir we did this acha humne kiya tha last class mein kaha kiya tha humne yes sir we did this last class We did this. The answer will be like two into ten. Uh, I mean, two into t ninety percent, right? So it was before half life. Two. Oh, this was before half life. Okay, okay, fine. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah, I got it, got it. Okay, okay, fine. What we did not, I don't know. I mean, in my head there is something I did not do in your class. Okay, so if I uh, remember it now, then I will just uh, mention it to you guys. Okay, for now you write pseudo first order reaction. Pseudo first order. reaction okay now what is pseudo first order reaction let us imagine there is a reaction you must have learnt it in alcohol chapter that if you add ester and water you are going to get carboxylic acid plus alcohol okay and also please don't write this now okay you can write it later on please don't write it now let's imagine we have 10 moles of ester Okay, and for this you just need a what? You just need ten moles of water also. Okay, you just need ten moles of water also. And if you are going to add more water, let us suppose, for imagine, rather than ten moles, you have thousand moles of water. That means water is in excess. Now, when you have thousand moles of water, and after this, if you are going to increase the concentration of water if you are going to increase the amount of water that is not going to affect the rate of the reaction why because 
whatever reaction was going to happen, it has already happened with 10 of the moles of water molecule. Further increasing the concentration of water molecule is not going to result in any increase in the rate of the reaction. Okay, so if something is in excess, that part is not going to affect the rate of the reaction. That means we will not write the water part in the rate of the reaction. So this is rather not a first order reaction, but it becomes first order reaction only and only if one of the reactant is in excess. All of you understood this point of about pseudo first order reaction is on guys. All of you understood this point? Second yeah, yes, yes, yeah, yeah, sure. Second repeat. I'm saying that uh, this, this reaction, ester plus water, it is what? Essentially, it is a second order reaction because we have ester and we have water. Okay. But since water is in excess, changing the concentration of water, that means if you are going to increase the concentration even further more, rather than from 1000, you are going to do, let us suppose that 1050, this increase in the concentration is not going to result in an increase in the rate of the reaction because whatever reaction was going to happen, it has already occurred within this 10 moles. Okay. And it does not require any other water molecule. So addition of another water molecule, addition of plenty of another mo water molecule, additional water molecules, it is not going to affect the rate of reaction because they are not even reacting. And if something is not reacting, how can they affect the rate of the reaction? Now you guys understood this, yes or no, please tell me. Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. So this is what? This is a pseudo first order reaction. It is essentially not a true first order reaction. But when something is in excess, it behaves as a first order reaction. So please write the reaction. Which is the reaction which is not truly first order. But under certain condition. under certain condition. What is the certain condition? When one reactant is in excess, it becomes first order. It becomes first order. These reactions are called pseudo first order reactions. Pseudo first order reaction. Okay. And in the example, we are going to write the same reaction of ester and water. Easter. I'm writing the structure of Easter only, okay? CS3, C double bond O, O, and then again one CS3. Plus water is going to give you CS3, C double bond O, OH plus CS3, OH. Okay, so Easter plus water giving you carboxylic acid and alcohol. Now, the rate equation will be equal to the rate constant K into the concentration of what? Only ester and not water because this will be in excess. And order of this reaction will be equal to 1. But molecularity will be still 2 because ester has to collide with water molecule. And if you remember molecularity, it relates to the collision of the reactant to form product. So water and ester, they are colliding. So two are colliding. That means molecularity will be equal to two. Okay, remember this point. Please write, if a reactant is in excess, If a reactant is in excess, then the rate does not depend
does not depend on that reactant. लिए आप लोगों ने यस एनओपी सुनी ऑल ऑफ यू डन यस एनओपी सुनी गाइस यस सर डन चलिए नाउ राइट द टॉपिक कोरिजन थ्योरी ओके लेट मी जस्ट टॉक अ फ्यू थिंग्स अबाउट कोरिजन थ्योरी एंड देन वी आर गोइंग टू राइट द पॉइंट्स ऑफ कोरिजन थ्योरी First thing is that collision theory says that a reaction will happen only if the reactant they are going to collide. So first thing is very important that reactant molecules, the reactants, should collide. Okay, they are going to collide. Okay, they should collide. Now collision can happen in different ways, right? Collision can happen in different ways. For example, there is a collision in which we have A molecule and we have B molecule. They are colliding with each other, but they are very slow. They're colliding and they're just like this in the vicinity. They're very slow, slow collision. So I hope all of you can agree that if there is a very slow collision, it is not going to result in, in the formation of the product because if some things are colliding very fastly, then only there is a chance of those two molecules getting attached or those two molecules giving some kind of product. Okay, so this is one case that they should have certain energy, certain kinetic energy should be associated. There should be some threshold or some kinetic energy if the particles are having kinetic energy greater than that, then they are going to give the product. Otherwise, they are not going to give the product. Okay, so first thing is that they should have some kind of minimum energy there. Now, another type of collision that can happen is, first of all, a very good collision in which they are going to have energy and they're going colliding like this. Head-on collision is happening. Other case would be that if you have one molecule here and the other molecule is here, let's suppose, and these are going in this direction and this is going in this direction. So they are going to collide, but they are going to just collide tangentially. Now, I hope all of you will agree with this also that if, you are going, if they are going to collide just tangentially, then they are not going to give the product. Even if they have certain good amount of or the minimum, minimum amount of required energy, then also they are not going to give any product because they are colliding just tangentially. And there will be some particles which will be colliding halfway, right? Which will be colliding halfway. Now, this is also not going to give product because, for example, if the reactive species is here, the reactive part is here, then this is not colliding, right? So the whole molecule should collide with the whole other molecule. The first thing is energy and the other thing is what orientation. Okay, so these are the two important factors which determine effective collision. Which determines what effective collision. Okay, so this is the main point. Effective collision should happen. Reaction can only happen if there is effective collision. And what are the conditions for effective, effective collision? Energy and orientation. Is this clear? Yes or no, please tell me, guys. Yes, sir. All of you are clear with this? Okay. Anyone with doubt, please tell me. Shaheen, Lubna. No? No, sir. Can you explain no. one more time, sir? Yeah, sure. Ma Matthew, which part? Tell me. Oh, the, the Energy. Actually, yeah. so you cannot hear me. Okay, fine. I was saying that see, for effective collision to happen, there are two conditions. First condition is that they should have some minimum amount of energy so that they are colliding and all of the molecule is colliding with another molecule or one reactant species is colliding with another reactant species so that they can form some kind of bond. If they are colliding very with very little energy or just they are touching each other, they are not going to form any bonds. Okay. And then there is orientation. If they are doing head-on collision, then that is fine with the minimum amount of energy. If they are doing head-on collision, then that is fine. Otherwise, if they are just touching each other, scratching the surfaces and going away, 
that is also a collision, but that is not going to give you a product. Similarly, if they are halfway colliding with each other, that is also not going to give the product because let's suppose the reactive species, uh, sorry, the reactive site is here and this, this reactive site is here, then also they are not going to give the product because those reactive sites are not colliding with each other. Okay. So first thing is that the reactives, the energy should be there. First thing is that energy should be there. And then in the orientation, the reactive side of one molecule should be colliding with the reactive side of the another molecule. Okay, then only the reaction can happen and then only the product can be formed. Matthew, is this clear now? Yes, sir, it's clear now. Okay. Right, next. First point is that there must be collision taking place. There must be collision taking place. There must be collision taking place between reactant molecules between reactant molecules between react molecules but every collision is not fruitful is not fruitful that means they are not going to give product. only small number of collision only small number of collisions only small number of collisions are effective and bring about chemical change. Okay. Only a few are going to bring about chemical change. That means they are going to give product. Now right next. The minimum amount. The minimum amount of energy required by reactant molecule required by reactant molecule for effective For effective collision is called threshold energy is called threshold energy right next point there must be proper orientation proper orientation between the reactant molecules for effective collision. Now, we can conclude The necessary condition for effective collision what are the necessary condition number one threshold energy and second is proper orientation.
डन गई जैसे नो पिक्सल मी या ओके राइट नेक्स्ट मैक्सवेल बोल्ड्समैन डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन अच्छा इससे पहले एक सवाल लिखिए सर जस्ट सेकेंड सॉरी गई राइट अ क्वेश्चन बिफोर दिस लार्ज नंबर ऑफ लार्ज नंबर ऑफ पार्टिकल्स हैव थ्रेश होल्ड एनर्जी हैव थ्रेश होल्ड एनर्जी बट स्टिल the reaction is slow the reaction is slow and there ask you why theek hai now one thing please keep in mind this is not a generalized case okay so they are saying that let's suppose there is a case in which we have a very large number of particles which are having <coughs> having the threshold energy but what they observed was that the reaction is still slow that means reaction is not fast even though if you have a very large number of particles having threshold energy then we expect that all of those molecules should be doing effective collision but the reaction is still slow what they have found out that means we have fulfilled one condition of threshold energy and the reaction is still slow it means that we are not fulfilling the other condition yes or no please tell me guys we are fulfilling only one condition that and the reaction is still slow if both of the conditions are fulfilled if both of these conditions are fulfilled right if you have a very large number of particles having threshold energy and very large number of molecules having proper orientation then the reaction will be very fast obviously but since they are saying that we have seen that threshold energy is high but the result is what the reaction is slow that means obviously the proper orientation is not there right that means proper orientation is not there in this particular case again i am saying it is not a generalized case एक रिएक्शन में ऐसा हुआ है उन लोगों ने सवाल में दिया ओके फॉर वन रिएक्शन दिस हैज हैपेंड ठीक है यू विल नॉट यू विल नॉट कीप इन योर माइंड कि लार्ज नंबर पार्टिकल्स व्हेन दे हैव थ्रेशोल्ड एनर्जी देन द रिएक्शन इज टू दैट इज नॉट अ यूनिवर्सल स्टेटमेंट फॉर वन रिएक्शन इट हैज हैपेंड ओके प्लीज कीप दिस इन योर माइंड इट इज राइट इट इज ड्यू टू इम्प्रॉपर ओरिएंटेशन of improper orientation of colliding particles that's it okay this is the answer now after this you are going to write maxwell boltzmann distribution Okay, so please look at Maxwell Boltzmann distribution. I hope this will give you some. Okay, so this is okay. This is working fine. Okay, please make this graph. This is number of molecules, and in the x-axis, you will have kinetic energy. or you can also have velocity okay kinetic energy or velocity i'm picking three points this is point a this is point b and this is point c okay my question is which point has highest kinetic energy is it a is it b or is it c send the answer on chat okay zoom chat
two guys have answered till now. Okay. ओके मानसी ओके मैथ्यू ओके अक्षय एनी वन एल्स नो वन ओके बच्चे अब आंसर चेंज कर रहे हैं गाइस प्लीज सी व्हाट दे आर आस्किंग हाईएस्ट काइनेटिक एनर्जी सो यू जस्ट लुक एंड यू डोंट हैव टू इवन लुक एट द ग्राफ यू लुक एट द एक्सेस ऑफ काइनेटिक एनर्जी यू लुक एट द एक्सेस ऑफ काइनेटिक एनर्जी ए विल बी वेयर ए विल बी एट दिस पॉइंट बी विल बी एट दिस पॉइंट सी विल बी एट दिस पॉइंट सो दिस इज सी दिस इज बी एंड दिस ए सो ऑब्वियसली सी इज हैविंग व्हाट ये मैक्सिमम काइनेटिक एनर्जी ओके एज एन ई जो ऊपर है वही सबसे ज्यादा होगा हमेशा Okay, what this this point has some significance. What is the significance of this point? This point has a significance that most molecules are having this kinetic energy. Most molecules are having this kinetic energy. That's the significance because number of molecules this much. Most of the molecules or most of the number of molecules are having this particular kinetic energy. That's the only significance. Okay, now <clears throat> why this Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution is important in chemical, chemical kinetics because it says that. very few particles are having high energy right so there will be let say for example the threshold energy will be somewhere here the threshold energy will be somewhere here and only these particles okay these are what a fraction of molecules or fraction of particles they have kinetic energy which is greater than the threshold energy okay which is greater than the threshold energy fraction of particles okay please draw this graph and after drawing this graph you will write some remarks regarding it please write some remarks first thing is that what is this mbd maxwell boltzmann distribution shows so please write maxwell boltzmann distribution curve is a bell shaped is a bell shaped curve bell shaped curve between number of particles and kinetic energy next next it shows that it shows that very few particles have kinetic energy very few particles have kinetic energy greater than threshold energy okay this threshold energy is important but let's say for example the threshold energy is 5 joules okay but each and every reactant they will have certain amount of energy on its own 
none of the molecules nobody in the complete universe they have zero energy okay there is nothing as zero energy this can only exist if you have zero kelvin temperature even if you have one kelvin temperature that particular species or that particular system is going to have some kind of energy okay even if it is vibrational energy that will be present so each and every reactant molecule they will have some kind of energy already with them right they will have some kind of energy already with them now let's suppose you have something like this uh what do i say let's suppose you have the average energy of all the molecule is somewhere one joules that means in order to activate this one joule we need how much of energy four joules of energy now this four joule of energy this was the base reactant molecule this was the threshold energy and the difference between threshold energy and the average energy of the reactant molecule is what activation energy so four joules of energy is required in order to activate the reactant molecule okay that is known as activation energy write a point activation energy okay activation energy what is activation energy please write this with me the minimum amount of the minimum amount of additional energy additional energy required by reactant molecule reactant molecule to achieve threshold energy to achieve threshold energy is called activation energy <clears throat> so the reactant species will have some average energy when you give that average energy the activation energy this will result in the complete threshold energy okay this is et that is threshold energy okay after this right progress of reaction okay please see in progress of reaction we have in the y in the x axis reaction coordinate and the y axis we have the potential energy we have the potential energy let's suppose the reactant molecules they are starting from there somewhere from here this is reactant okay and this is product this is the energy of product now obviously this is the average energy of all the reactant molecule so in order to get to products they will have to go through activation and then they are only going to form the product okay so they will reach this point this highest energy point here this is what this is your threshold energy okay so this is what this is threshold energy okay now this value here the threshold energy and the average energy of the reactant this is your activation energy okay ea activation energy now the difference between the energy of the reactant molecule and the product 
this is known as the enthalpy of a reaction given by delta h okay given by delta h delta h is a delta h is the energy of product minus energy of reactant now if you look at here the energy of product minus the energy of reactant will be equal to tell me what positive or negative guys which is greater reactant or product which is having higher energy ज़्यादा एनर्जी किसके पास है रिएक्टेंट या प्रोडक्ट रिएक्टेंट रिएक्टेंट राइट सो ऑब्वियसली दिस विल बी व्हाट नेगेटिव एंड दैट इज व्हाई डेल्टा एच विल बी नेगेटिव एंड दैट इज व्हाई दिस विल बी एक्सोथर्मिक है ना जब रिएक्टेंट प्रोडक्ट में बनेगा तो इतने अमाउंट ऑफ एनर्जी दिस डेल्टा एच एनर्जी विल बी रिलीज्ड ओके सो रिलीज्ड मींस नेगेटिव साइन इट मींस एक्सोथर्मिक यू विल हैव अ सिमिलर ग्राफ इफ यू आर हैविंग द एनर्जी ऑफ product that will be less than reactant okay so for that you can make another graph okay so let's suppose we have the reactant here you have the product here and oops it has to reach an activation energy of something like this okay so now this part here this is the same thing activation energy this is your delta h and this is your delta h this is reaction coordinate this is potential energy the energy this reactant this is product energy of product minus energy of reactant it will be equal to what positive that is a delta h will be positive and it will be endothermic now listen to this last point here in the complete reaction this and this points these are having highest energy and at this point the reactant species will have some kind of atomic configuration that atomic configuration is known as transition state transition state or they are also known as activated complex they are also known as activated complex okay guys yes or no please tell me yes please note this down let me know when you are done कल आप लोगों का स्कूल है क्या और yes. हैविंग स्कूल तो स्कूल है सबका अच्छा is everyone done yes or no please tell me yes sir okay fine great now please write some remarks please write some number 1 point when activation energy is high 
when the activation energy will be what the activation energy is going to be high in that case the average energy of the molecules the reactant molecules will be low and to increase that to activated energy to active uh, to activation energy it will be what difficult and it will be a very slow process if activation energy is high the reactant molecule will take a lot of time to go and reach the threshold energy or the activation energy so when the activation energy is high the reaction is slow the reaction is slow next point when activation energy is low the reaction is fast also now these points whatever i'm going to write we have already discussed it when the energy of product is greater than the energy of reactant in this case product minus reactant will be what positive and then it will be what endothermic endothermic okay and delta h will be positive next point when energy of reactant is greater than energy of product in this case it will be exothermic and delta h will be negative okay now last point when colliding particles when colliding particles possess energy equal to threshold energy equal to what equal to threshold energy but you can also write in bracket activation energy okay equal to threshold energy or activation energy that particular atomic configuration is known as transition state or activated complex state right? the atomic configuration is called threshold energy oops sorry please is called transition state and rather or activated complex okay okay so please write this down guys okay and that's it for today we'll meet tomorrow inshallah okay my cousins are saying bye to you guys yeah these people mere bachche bhi tum logo ko bye bolenge they will say bye please